Hi, my name is Thorsten Schmidt and welcome back on the NMS Prime channel. Today we want to speak about CMTS routing basics. And since I started with the DOCSIS standard, I just found it that it's quite a complicated topic and it really is important to understand how routing in an HFC or especially in a DOCSIS network works to get a full picture. And still until now, I'm just a little bit um, nervous when it gets to routing. But in this video, we just want to give you a better understanding of how things work. And if you have the stuff in mind, which I want to explain you now, I guess the magic will just go away a little bit. It's not this complicated. And now let's start with just some basic introductions about the OSI model. I guess most of you have heard about the OSI model. It's just called the OC reference model, which is the implementation or the basic of the whole internet and how things work. And in the OSI world, we have um, for the understanding of this video, three different layers. The first layer is the layer, which is the lowest one. So layer one is just called um, physical layer. So these are just the cables and the stuff which we are using, but it's not interesting for this topic. It gets more interesting at the layer two, which is the data segment layer or data link. And what this means is that the entire internet, or well not the entire, the classical internet is working with the MAC protocol, so the Ethernet protocol and the routing, for example, in the Ethernet protocol is done with MAC addresses. And so you noticed this chart I introduced in a video which is called uh, CMTS provisioning basics. So maybe if you don't uh, uh, have looked at now until now, then just jump into it. And um, what I introduced in this video is just that we have our HFC networks, our cable modems, our CMTS and our switch. And which is also quite important for this video is that um, here we need to have uh, some kind of routing infrastructure. So maybe let's just call it here. So this will be our backbone routing. And this is also important to get a better understanding. And back to layer two topic. Uh, layer two means that behind every network device, um, we have a layer two segment. So for example, here in this cloud between the CMTS and the cable modems, we have a layer two segment. We have a layer two segment between the CMTS and the switch and the CMTS and the provisioning server. And here we've got another layer two segment. So you just can imagine that this is some kind of uh, cloud where um, the entire uh, magic happens and the addressing between these segments are done with MAC addresses. So if a cable modem wants to send something to a CMTS at layer two uh, level, then it's addressing the CMTS's um, cable bundle MAC address and the packet will flow through this. And especially the same like when the CMTS wants to address the switch or the provisioning system, the provisioning system can only be addressed during layer three because it's not directly connected. But to get uh, to this uh, Linux server, the CMTS needs to address first the package at layer two to the switch, which will be done with MAC addresses. And then the switch will address the packet uh, for the provisioning server also at layer two. So here are all kind of network segments or clouds, uh, which are layer two connected. And now we are getting to layer three, which you know is the IP segment. And here we can just have the same understanding of how things work, but we have different segments and let's jump into this. So layer three, um, is called network layer and the populous protocol is IP. So now how work, how is the stuff working? So for example, um, first we need to know which devices are routers and not switches. So we will mark the devices which are routers. So the CMTS, most of the CMTSs at our times are routers, so we assume a CMTS is a router. Uh, a Linux server is also uh, some kind of router. 
This is just a switch, so this is no routing infrastructure. And here we have also a router. And yeah, that's it. The cable modems are just end devices, so we don't want to uh, add them as routers, but they are some kind of also routers. But I want to explain you why. And now what happens is that we have um, between every router, uh, we have network segments and we can adapt these network segments how we want by assigning IP addresses or IP pools. And this is the magic uh, of the entire internet. And what we see, for example, is that we have between the CMTSs and the cable modem, we have a network segment or a network pool, which is, uh, for example, an IP pool in our system, in the NMS Prime system. And between the CMTSs and the Linux uh, server, the provisioning server, we need a network which we call transfer network. And this is a different network than, for example, between CMTSs and cable modems or between CMTSs and uh, CPEs. So let's, for example, just adapt a CPE behind the cable modem. And these are different networks. So this is quite important that we have a different network between the CMTS and the Linux server, which we call transfer network. Maybe I just want to make another cloud, so it's just here. Yeah, this is quite important to understand. And now I want to just um, show you our default scheme, how we address the IP pools. So the transfer network itself is, and our scheme is 10.255. 0.1 for the provisioning server and for the first CMTS we just use the last IP address in this segment this is a slash 24 network so it will be 0 0.254 I hope you can read it and it's just a normal segment slash 24 okay and now for example if we want to talk to the cable modems uh, we just got another IP segment, which will be, for example, something like um, 10, 0, 0, 0, slash, it's not this important, maybe 22 or 21. So, okay, and what this implies is um, that the CMTS has different interfaces inside. And all the networks which we want to assign to the cable modems and to the CPEs must be assigned to the bundle interface and all the networks or just one network or the network address which will be assigned to transfer network must be assigned to one of the gigabit or 10 uh, gigabit interfaces and um, that's the first magic what um, is quite important to understand so this is just a local network which is just some kind of transfer network to getting the requests from the cable modem cpes forwarded to our provisioning system and um, for this purpose, we need a separate network, which is just a transfer network. And the normal routing will just uh, go this way. So there will be also another routing segment, which we don't want to discuss this much at the time, which will be forward our entire traffic to our core router or to your backbone ISP. And this is just going this way, but this will be another cloud um, of the IP segment. And now what is just quite important and what we will figure out now is how or which kind of routes you need that a cable modem will get online. So this is um, quite important, but it's not complicated to understand. So the CMTS uh, just needs no kind of routing to get um, a cable modem online. What we do with routing inside the CMTS is just addressing our core routing infrastructure. So what is quite important is just that we have assigned our cable bundle interfaces, for example, for the cable modems, for the CPEs, for the MTAs, and to get these segment, uh, these network segment uh, available. And that's just the magic. And the Linux server, so the provisioning server, um, just needs these kind of internal IP address, which will be um, this one. 
And what is quite important is just because the Linux server normally, when he wants to access to the internet, has a default route which says every packet uh, that I don't know where to address it, I just want to forward it to our core routing infrastructure, to our core router. This is, I guess, in, in, the, in the Linux world, it's called default gateway. In Windows, it's called uh, standard gateway. So the default gateway for every packet, which we don't know where to address is, is just our um, default gateway. And for this purpose, um, just if a cable modem, for example, requests an, an DHCP, it will come from this segment to the CMTS, and the CMTS will put it to the cable helper address which means it will forward it to the cable helper address, which will be an internal address in this segment. So it will be this segment of our Linux server. It forwards the packet from the cable modem to our provisioning server. And because the provisioning server don't know until now how the packet uh, gets back or how this segment of the cable modem, which he wants to assign with DHCP, is addressed for this purpose, we just need a route at the uh, a provisioning server which says if we want to address the cable modem segments you just need to forward these packets to this address so to the segment which is directly connected to me and um, this is just a principle of normal routing it says I don't this server cannot reach the segment and for this purpose it can reach this segment and routing says if I want to go to this address I just need to forward it via this IP address which will be the CMTSS gigabit interface, and then it forwards it here, and the cable modem termination system, of course, knows how to forward it to this segment. So this is just the magic, and of course, when a packet comes from this cable modem um, inside this range and wants to address this address, it's a different task, like I tried to explain, because this kind of device, the cable modem termination system, knows both IP address ranges and forwards the packet to this, um, segment and then it's just there. So again, here it is important that you configure the um, IP bundle IP addresses correctly for your cable modems, for your CPEs, for your MTAs. And here it is quite important that you forward or that you add routings uh, or routes for these segments, which all will go through this CMTS. So that's the magic, not quite easy to understand. And like I explained, routing inside the CMTS is more or is just uh, interesting for how you can forward your stuff for the access to the internet, not for the access to the Linux server. So let's have a look at my paper if I missed something, but I guess that's it. And maybe we just want to jump into our demo system and have a short look how it looks in the NMS Prime system, just that you see the magic behind it and theoretical aspects and how it works in the practical usage. Let's jump into this. So, okay, let's get started in the NMS Prime system and see how things practically work. And I guess most of you see that there's a CMTS uh, section under provisioning. And if you jump into this, we just see we have two different um, CMTS devices until now. And this is our uh, device which is working. I'm at our demo system. So, okay, let's jump into this. And what we see here is like I showed you on the flip chart, this is the IP address of the transfer network from our cable modem termination system and this device means okay the CMTS is online and here we see our IP pools so maybe it's good if I switch the window to the other side a little bit and what we see is that we have a cable modem segment which I showed you on the flip chart and we have some different segments about CPE private and MTA stuff so that's it and what you see below it, I'm just at the German version. I hope it's not uh, this critical to you. This is the configuration proposal. Um, and here we see we've got a section routing slash IPs. And here is exactly the magic what I tried to explain you in the start of the video, where you can see provisioning routing. And here it scripts that this is the routing which we need to adapt at our um, provisioning system. And for this purpose, we need to, to edit uh, or edit um, 
define in etc sysconfig network scripts root and then there must be the interface and here we need to say that for example if we want to reach our cable modems every packet which wants to reach our cable modems must be forwarded to the c or through the cmts's um, transfer network ip address that's just the magic and in practical let's jump into the demo system here we are um, let's clear it maybe we just have a look um, here's just some stuff with uh, VLAN so don't worry about it you don't need it um, here for example we have the cable modem um, IP address of the network of the transfer network segment normally there will be a file called roots and inside it there must be the roots which we are explained at the flip chart and that's the magic and below you see um, or what is tested is for example if um, a line is red here we see okay this route is not found at the provisioning system and probably this network will not go online if there are coming requests from it and what we see below is that we need uh, to add at our cable modem termination system at the interface bundle one we need to add these kind of network addresses that these will be available at our system and what is just good uh, for testing is that of course you can uh, try to ping for example from the cable modem termination system try to reach the uh, internal address of our provisioning server and back and maybe one aspect which is also quite important if you change IP addresses um, especially the network uh, transfer network segments um, then for this purpose um, if for example the HCP system is not working or maybe just first you need to test with system control status DHCP uh, or DHCPD if it's working and if it's not starting then maybe one problem is that if you adapt your uh, DHCP server configuration that the shared network interface must match um, to your transfer network and otherwise it will not start I guess in version 2.3 there is still uh, this string hard-coded, um, I guess in version 2.4, which will be released soon uh, in, in, in uh, September 2018. Um, there will be automatically replaced um, if the system matches a different IP address. So maybe just if you get stuck here, check out if this part is correctly uh, working. So I hope um, this brings a little bit light into the magic of routing for CMTSs and provisioning at DOCSIS segments. And thanks for watching. Maybe don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. We will push interesting stuff to you. Don't worry, it's no advertising. It's just stuff about NMS Prime and how you can use it. So I would like if you subscribe to our mailing list and thanks for watching and we will see in one of the next videos. That's it. Bye.